What is going on guys? My name is Hussein and this is a very interesting question that uh, I thought I'd gonna make a video about. I already answered this question in the comment section uh, for that particular video. I think uh, it was the the video on uh, uh, on DoorDash moving moving from RabbitMQ to Kafka. And the question was, uh, what is the maximum number of connections, TCP connections, that the client can send or, or the server can receive or, 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 or something like that, right? So I don't remember the exact question. Uh, there are so many parts to this question. So if we're talking from the server perspective and from the client's perspective, the answer is different. However, we need to clarify some points. First of all, there is, for a given server, there is no limited uh, theoretical maximum server connections. It depends on the memory and CPU to actually process these TCP connections. However, before you guys yell at me, for each client connecting to that particular server, there is a limit. There is a theoretical limit that you physically cannot exceed. And and why? Because of the TCP header, right? The TCP header, specifically layer four, has a port header. And then UDB and, and, and uh, TCP it doesn't have to be UDB. It's just layer four in general. Quick. I don't know if they quick fix that. I hope they did. I can't. I, I don't think they did because uh, you, they're using still UDB. But the bit size is 16 bit. That gives me a maximum of 65,000 connections. 64-ish. Because some, some stuff are reserved. And that only means for let's say one client right from a given ip address to the server to the same ip address they can establish 64000 tcp connection between each other and that's it you cannot exceed that because what where do you get to put the next the 64th and one right there is no limit that it's only 16 bit in the port header, right? In the, the TCP. However, if you are a server, guys, right? Like take, take WhatsApp, for example, check out the video right here. They managed to do 3 million TCP connections per server. Why? Because usually a client will not execute 64 million connection, 64,000 connection to the same server. It's, it, it's just ridiculous. Nobody does that, All right? And I did talk about uh, the browser executing an HTTP 1.1 to be specific, opening six to 10 connections. That's just a hack, guys, All right? Because HTTP limitation in 1.1, they could not send multiple requests at the same time concurrently on the same TCP connection. They had to revert to this idea of having multiple uh uh, first, they tried pipelining, and that failed uh, because of head of line blocking. And then they tried just to open multiple TCP connections to the same host, right? But that, even that, it will not exceed the maximum, right? It will put a little bit of load on your server, but it's not really a big deal, right? So that that's why you're gonna get all these connections, and but yeah, so you can s paralyze them. So yeah, guys, that's 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 there is no physical limit. Only when it comes to a client and a server. There's this 64,000 connections. But a server can handle so many, right? Because if it, it can it can handle... Here's the thing, right? The server to a given port can uh, port... Like, listen, the server is only listening on one port, right? Let's think about this real clear, right? A server is only listening on one port. Why is the server and the client have maximum of 64,000 connections? The reason is that the server has a fixed IP address. The server also has a fixed port. Remember? It's listening only on port 80 or 443, if it's TPS, right? Or, or any other port. So you technically, as a client from a single IP address, 
to run out of this combination, that's the 64,000 connection from the client side. That's it. You can only execute 64,000 because you're gonna first you're gonna connect and you're gonna use the port, right? The source port because there's always a source port in the client that that we use in order to send back information to the to the client, right? From the server side. If, if that is the source port doesn't exist, we we don't know where to send the information, and that's what labeled the connection, right? And there is a that source IP source port is a two to the power sixteen, which is sixty four thousand connection, right? So that's the limit here. So you can do so much. It's just pair port, pair client, pair IP address, right? So if the, if a server it can if, the, if there is a, a different IP address, here's another 64,000 connection. If there is another IP address, here's another 64,000 uh, connection. So, pair client, right? But nobody's going to execute 64,000 connections from the same IP address, right? Why would you do that? It doesn't make any sense, right? Because maybe the same TCP connection can handle so much. And we fixed that problem with HTTP tour. Right? The, the pipelining and the head of line blocking. We'll still have a head of line blocking with HTTP 2 at the TCP level, which we fixed with HTTP 3. But one TCP connection is enough now. We open one. Is that the problem is like the server? How much does it handle? You can handle as much as you want. Right? As long as you had the, don't don't open a lot of connection from a client, so so technically there is no limit. Right? It, as long as you're coming from different IP addresses, there's no limit. The sky is the limit. You have more memory, be my guest, open. Right? You have more CPU to handle these <laughs> to these connections, be my guest. I mean, I mean, what's that? Did it three million? I don't think anyone exceeded that. Right, I, I don't. I'm not aware of any company pair server again. One server. I'm talking about one stinking server, right? So let's talk about proxies here. Proxies have problem with this, guys. What is a proxy? What is a reverse proxy? We talked about that. Check it out here. But a proxy, a reverse proxy, is actually a client when it when it comes to the backend. So this client connects to the back end in a pooled manner it opens a lot of connection to the back end so there is fear of actually exceeding the limit per server so let's say you have th uh, two server two back end servers here and you have one reverse proxy and there is a client that makes a request so at the side we don't worry much right because there are many clients from different countries from different ip addresses but at the side at the back end of the reverse proxy which is also the front end of the back end right the reverse proxy will make a request to the back end right and let's say it picks the server it can open one tcp connection and uh, once it opens that tcp connection you have reserved tcp connection right i'm talking about layer 4 proxying right now layer 4 proxying is a problem when it comes to this because if you if you have a client and then that client now that it will just almost like terminate the connection and then create another connection on your behalf the reverse proxy is the source ip right and it establishes a connection to this guy and then let's let's another client comes in with another ip address the reverse proxy will connect as itself to the same Target. So we just used the same IP address and the reverse proxy, different source port. So now to a given backend, the reverse proxy can only open 64,000 connections. That's the limit, <laughs> right? That's the limit. We, we will hit the limit, right? Especially with layer four proxying. It's not, it's not scalable. It, it will easily you will easily hit that limit with a web socket if you do like web sockets proxying in ha proxy i believe they just downgraded to that uh to to layer four uh to uh to layer four proxying from uh, layer seven just 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 they stream the same connection that and then that's as a result 
that TCP connection cannot be used for anything else, unfortunately, right? If you were doing a layer for stateful connection, right? Like WebSocket or, or even just database stuff, right? Can't use the same t t pipe to send other stuff like HTTP stuff. That's why connection pooling and hopefully quick Envoy is doing a good job with this, and I and I, I really like what they are doing with this. All right, Envoy is using HTTP two at the back end, right? And when you use HTTP two. You can use one TCP connection and send as many requests as you want, given that you are a layer seven proxy, right? Because if you're a layer seven proxy, then you don't have this, you, you, you can technically reuse the same TCP connection if you know what you're doing, because it's, it's almost like a stateless request, right? The request becomes stateless. Now, if I have a request that comes to the server at the layer seven, HTTP, I'm going to terminate it and I'm, I'm going to establish the request goes to this server or this server or this server. It doesn't matter, right? You can establish to any connection and then send that request to any backend. That is absolutely powerful. And if you use HTTP2, you can multiplex these requests into the same TCP connection. And that's awesome, right? Because now you, can have, you don't have a limit anymore. You're going to open one, two, three, let's say, and that's it. You're not going to exceed that, right? And then you can serve hundreds of clients at the back end on this three TCP connection. This is called connection pooling, right? But more likely TCP, uh, not TCP, uh, this is multiplexing, right? HTTP multiplexing. Quick will do the same job, it will do it even better, right, at the back end. There is the cost, obviously, HTTP2 cost, a quick cost, where, where now we're not using just a beautiful TCP connection where the operating system is doing our job. It's us, at the application level, we're assembling these streams and, and figuring out what, what, what packet belongs to which stream and reassembling it so the application can actually understand what is this thing. So it's a CPU cost, and, and, and Google and team are working on, on lowering the cost of the CPU for that thing. So yeah, maximum connections exist. It depends. What are you doing? With proxying, if you're doing layer four proxying, you'll hit that very quick, I believe, right? Because if you have like a hundred thousand, it really depends how many backends, right? That's why if, you, if you're load balancing in the backend, let's take the layer four example again. Let's say we have 120,000 clients here. Right, and we have one backend, and you want one twenty thousand WebSocket connection, which will turn into lower level layer four proxying, which any client will now be terminated, and then now I, as a reverse proxy, I will connect to the backend on behalf of the client. That's that's what a reverse proxy is, right? And now. The backend knows me as the IP address, so I have only this much source ports to work with. So you'll hit this limit even less than 64,000 because most of the ports are reserved, right? So yeah, that's a problem. You're going to hit it quickly, right? So that's why you add another backend. So now you have double. You have 64,000 times two, 120, 120 and more. And then, yeah you'll immediately hit these limits. So the solution is add add more backends, add more backends. Now this is a bottleneck. Now what do we do? We we know what to do, right? We know how to scale reverse proxy. I talked about that. Active, active, uh, active, passive, uh, keep alive, all that stuff, right? You can, you can basically do a DNS um, uh, uh, balancing where uh, you have multiple reverse proxies, which are technically stateless. And, 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 and it doesn't matter which, which reverse proxy you hit, we get a load balance across these backends. So you can do so many tricks to kind of balance the load as much as possible, right? And, and we talk about all that stuff, failover, and active, active, DNS. Right, so there is another trick that HA proxy did at one point to avoid that maximum number of connections. And uh, it is it is basically what the router does, right? The router, your router today, if you have, if 
you have a lot of devices, right? And all of these devices go to the same router, right? And that router makes the request on your behalf, technically, right? But what the router does actually keeps a table, keeps a NAT table. So technically, it is just one TCP connection all the way to the destination. But it keeps a track of which client connected to which server, and then it matches up. It says, okay, oh, you went to Google, and okay, so this is your source IP source client. Let me forward it back to you. And it can only do that if it is the gateway. And if you go to now, you're watching this on your phone or your computer, go to the Wi-Fi setting or the LAN settings and click on details and you're going to see something called the gateway IP address. The gateway IP address is the trick here. Your machine, your laptop, your phone, if it doesn't know where to forward a packet to, it will forward it to, to the gateway. And that's, that's for free, right? So, so the IP destination is not the not a router, right? Just like the reverse proxy. It is actually the Google or or, or the Yahoo or 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 wherever the destination website. But the MAC address at the layer two data frame is destined to the router, and the router knows what to do about it. And if you can build a configuration that acts like a router, you can you can just eliminate that that limit, right? Because now you don't have this. The, this limitation anymore right you, you you have a table and you can grow as much stuff as you can put as many as many stuff as, as you as you want right and now in this case it's very difficult to achieve because now you have to put your client in the same network and make them as as uh make set those client gateway ip address as the reverse proxy or as this router right and it's very, very difficult to, to achieve. And then once you do that, now the client is as if it's talking to the back end directly. It's like it, it, the reverse proxy is just acting like a router. It's not having one TCP connection between the client and the reverse proxy and another one between itself and the back end. No, it's just one. Just like you, when you go to google.com on your phone, and you're on the Wi-Fi network on Starbucks or where anywhere, you don't have a connection between you and Starbucks Wi-Fi and that Starbucks Wi-Fi will create a TCP connection. No, it just swizzles the packets. That's how it works, right? All right, guys, this video was supposed to be four minutes talking about that, but I end up talking about proxy and maximum number of connections. So, so it was a very good discussion. <laughs> and I wanted to make these videos like almost like on a daily basis. Uh, I want to go through and just kind of answer a question a day. And, and I, I like talking to the camera like that. Hopefully I get a decent camera because I cannot use my phone when I do this. And I cannot do searches because I'm using my phone to record this stuff. So, guys, I love you so much. If you enjoyed this content, subscribe to this channel. I talk about the back end mostly. Talk about networking, security. I specialize in, in back end technology. I love, I love, I love, I love back end. So I talk, you see most content is it's only backup, back end technology here in this channel so love you so much gonna see you on the next one you guys stay awesome goodbye